How long has it been since Amazon bought you? What was the promised price, showrunners? When all the fans are dead, you would take your share of the treasure? Too long have we watched this go on. Too long have you disgraced Tolkien. You have no power here. Your show means nothing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that little uh, reenactment there. As you could tell, I took a few liberties with the original script, uh, kind of actually like the showrunners did for some of the repurposed dialogue in the Rings of Power that we'll talk about here shortly. So initially, I was watching this show to do reviews for my channel. Um, it was a therapeutic way for myself and also for my audience and fans to kind of get a glimpse of what all this hype was about for the show and for us to discuss some of the reasons why we thought it failed and some of the many reasons why and objectively it didn't do as well as a lot of other shows and why it didn't do as well as a lot of other Tolkien adaptations. But after episode four, I just became extremely apathetic and just kind of tired. Now, this show made me feel a lot of different things. Anger, apathy, narcolepsy, the list goes on. However, the thing it never made me feel was joy or excitement. And that's exactly what I was hoping from this show, was to bring me back to Middle Earth, was to give me that sense of excitement that I first had when watching the original trilogy. And yet, it never once made me feel that way. In fact, as I was watching some of the old Peter Jackson films, it almost kind of hindered my viewpoint of those. And once I felt that, I immediately started to shut down and just completely get rid of anything Amazon Prime or Rings of Power, whatever. There is no reason why I would watch this show if it is going to affect my viewership, affect my ability to watch, in my opinion, the greatest trilogy of all time, and also one of the best adaptations of all time. So because I saw this show affecting me and my ability to watch the trilogy, I, I like I said, I just canceled it. I said, you know what, I'm not doing this anymore, and I kind of shut down. Um, and I wanted to wait a little bit to see if maybe I could get back into it. Maybe I just needed some time. And the more and more I thought about turning on that stupid show, the more I thought about how it would affect my view of the previous iterations of Tolkien's adaptations and my favorite trilogy of all time, the Lord of the Rings. So if you watch this channel before, you'll see that I actually have three videos up going through episode one through four and kind of breaking them down and giving my thoughts and reviewing them. And I was going to do that for all eight episodes and I just couldn't. And here are three reasons why I stopped watching the Rings of Power show. Number one, and first and foremost, you could absolutely tell that the story came after the project. This was a corporatized show where people in an office building somewhere got together, a bunch of producers, and probably thought, what is the best way that we can promote the Lord of the Rings? How do we get this Lord of the Rings audience, how do we make the most money to monetize the Lord of the Rings fans? What's the best way to do that? Well, let's make a show. Okay, or let's make a movie, whatever it was. How do we do that? We have to get the rights to this or that. We have to go to the Tolkien estate. We have to do this or that. So it all started from a corporatized event, and you could see that throughout the show. None of it felt heartfelt. None of it felt like a passion project. None of it felt like there was, you know, and, and maybe there were some people who worked on this, undoubtedly, that had passion with what they were doing. I'm sure there were costume designers or production designers that really put their heart and soul into a lot of this stuff. But unfortunately, because of the people heading this thing, because of how they felt about it, it didn't come across that way. So like I said, I'm sure there are people who had this this kind of passionate view of the show, but I, I didn't get a sense of that, unfortunately. There were a few actors that I believe uh, had that same passion that they wanted to portray, and that showed, but for what they were given with the dialogue, it was a mess. And that's the other thing that with this, you know, with this topic of that this was a project before it was a story, 
you could tell that the dialogue was done in a way where no one was actually talking to each other. They were just hitting plot points or they were hitting what the showrunners or what the screenwriter wanted them to hit and then they'd move on. There were no actual conversations between people, between characters. And that's what endures us to people, right? That is what endures us to characters in shows and movies is that people have valid reasons for responding a certain way or valid responses to how people interact with each other. But throughout the entire show, people just seem to speak a, a word of dialogue, a sentence of dialogue, and then someone else would speak a word of dialogue when it never felt like they were actually interacting with one another. It was like they were they were cutting scenes together that they had done days or months apart and that the dialogue was written in a way that the other character wasn't even listening to that person. So within that same vein of this was a project before it was a story, never once did I feel like someone passionately came to the table and said, I have a story to tell and this is what it is. It always started as a money grab. It always started as a project before a narrative, before a story, before uh, some sort of passion project. You see that a lot with comics where an author or a, some sort of writer will creative uh, will come to the editorial team and say, I have a story to tell and I want to tell it with Batman or I want to tell it with Spider-Man. And they will take that passionate you know, writing ability, the, the capability to write that way, and they'll put it into their book and they'll have to sell it to them. I mean, that's what Peter Jackson did all those years ago. He had a passion project, he had a story to tell, and he said, I want to tell Tolkien's story. I want to do justice to Tolkien's books, and here it is. And he pitched it to all these different production companies, and all of them turned him down. It was failure after failure after failure until finally New Line Cinema picked it up and said, if you're gonna do this right, you're gonna do it in three films and we're gonna do it big. As opposed to this felt like all these corporatized suits in a room together saying, what's the best way to make money? No one came to them asking to do their passion, their passion project or a Lord of the Rings project. It felt like them all just kind of coming up with a get rich quick scheme. Number two, the showrunners. These showrunners, producers, writers, whatever you want to call them, they should be embarrassed, honestly. They should hang up their hats and retire from this profession at this point. It is a piss poor excuse for an entertainment medium, what they, what they did here. It's an insult to Tolkien, to streaming shows, to fantasy series in general, and to just basic logic and respect for one's audience. There is this gaudy, self-righteous pretentiousness to the dialogue and to the writing that gives this illusion of intelligence, cleverness, and wisdom when in all actuality, it is just repurposed blather from the Jackson films. And mystery box bullshit to artificially make us, the audience, feel a certain way. And speaking of making us feel a certain way, the showrunners did this with three main things. One, I already mentioned, the repurposed dialogue of Jackson's films. Two, the soundtrack and the score. And three, the characters. Now, you're probably asking, well, Max, what do you mean by the soundtrack and the score? How can they make you feel a certain way through that? Well, every time we would get introduced to a new location or a new character or something big had to happen, you could hear the music swell. You could hear the score swell and have an artificial tone in the score to where it would say, okay, are you ready? Now you're supposed to feel something. Now you're supposed to feel sad or now you're supposed to feel happy or amazed or whatever it is. And the score would try and emulate what it thought the audience should feel instead of actually emulating that emotion on screen. The other reason that I mentioned, the third reason, is the characters here, and especially with Galadriel. Now, I know most people, even people who enjoyed the show, said that one of their worst parts of the show is Galadriel. How she's written, how she's characterized, how she's acted by the actress. Galadriel is a spoiled petulant child, and yet is constantly being validated within the show and by her counterparts, and it often has the 
opposite effect for audience uh, members and for fans who watch this. It has this opposite effect where you actually end up kind of hating that character because they're so validated. So when the showrunners tried and make her this badass Conan-like warrior who had a body you know, a stack of bodies piled up over the years of her, you know, just slaying orcs. You you didn't believe it because you didn't see that. And if you did, it was so belligerently done and so, oh, like, beating you over the head with it. She was such a narcissistic, arrogant person that you couldn't find a commonality between her. You couldn't find a likable character trait. And yet the char- the showrunners and the characters around her just continued to validate her and, and promote her and, and, and continually like prop her up. And as an audience member, you're like, I, I hate this person even more because you're doing that. So these three things, the pre-purpose dialogue from Jackson's films, the score and the soundtrack, and the character development and the characters that the showrunners and screenwriters portrayed, all these things are a surefire way to prove that they can't actually organically make you feel something but have to have this manufactured making you feel something. And finally, number three, the selective lore citing. I believe I got this term from either Mahler or Shadowversity, but one of these gentlemen uh, who ripped this show in half and actually did a fantastic job of objectively breaking down why the show was such a failure at this point, they, I think it was one of them that, that, termed or this that coined this term selective lore citing and it's brilliant it rolls off the tongue and it, and it is seriously the best way of explaining what happened here they pull from the books only with certain things so the showrunner said that they kept going to the books you know keep just you know go back to the book go back to the book that's a famous clip that always tends to get played whenever talking about this but they were only pulling selective things and then would completely make other shit up for other things. So the only thing that was even remotely Tolkien was the fact that they would pull some names and locations, or maybe they'd have like, you know, a a sword in the background and and people could clap and, and be a bunch of seals, you know, clapping for, oh, look at the member berry. Remember the key, you know, oh, it's this is a key jangling moment. Remember this name or remember this location? Oh, I remember Mount Doom. I remember Mordor. Oh, I remember the Palantir. Like, again, it's disrespecting your audience to think that they would just take that at face value. So like I said, they would just pull these names and locations as like, Easter eggs or member berries because they can't actually adapt anything from the story or at least remotely try and adapt it. There were times where I was watching the show where I was like, they didn't even try at this point. They didn't even try to integrate this type of theme or or this type of characterization. I, I mean, let, let's think about Galadriel's husband. They didn't even, they gave, they gave like one line for his excuse to not be there. And it was just that he was dead. He just died somehow. Like he's just not there anymore. I think another thing within this selective lore citing type of mindset is one of the most interesting things actually. And that is a lot of like the Tolkien scholars that later just kind of became these shills for Amazon um, speculating and justifying why some of these characters had the arc that they actually had. Um, Like specifically Sauron, where, you know, they would say, well, if he is actually Sauron, that in shapeshifter form, uh, why would he be on a raft to find a better life for himself? The only explanation is that he must have been in Aregion at the time and first, you know, had this blah, blah, blah backstory. And they'll go into this long explanation of why they think, you know, well, maybe he's he's this or maybe he's that. When in all actuality, the sh- you know that the showrunners didn't put any of that thought process into this. They didn't put any of that time or effort into thinking about Hal Brand's uh, backstory or his purpose. Or, you know, think about why Galadriel's husband wasn't with them or where Galad- Galadriel's daughter is at this point. Like, all these different things that, that have holes in them, plot holes throughout the show, and why we didn't see Anatar. I mean, that was a huge 
in my opinion, one of the biggest mistakes they made because Anatar was supposed to be what people were coming to this show for. But Anatar was supposed to be, you know, this manipulative, manipulative kind of conniving character that people were going to be really interested to see how he manipulates, how he, you know, kind of manufactures the storyline um, and then how he later becomes Sauron. And they completely threw that away for some dumb romance story between you know, Halbrand and Galadriel that just fell completely flat. So because the showrunners didn't put any time or effort or thought or passion into this, why are these scholars doing that? Why are these, well, so-called scholars and shills and YouTubers and all this stuff trying to come up with these theories of like, well, maybe, you know, maybe this happened or, or maybe like, you know, well, the showrunners said this or the showrunners showed this like little member berry in the background. You know, that's a reference to, uh, you know, Baron and Luthien, oh my god. N you, do you really think that they fucking gave two shits about that stuff? Do you think that they really took the time to work that into the show because they said, this is going to be a great payoff at the end, or this is going to be a great payoff for season two? No, 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 no. They didn't give a single fuck about doing any of that. And it shows, it, it completely shows whenever you watch this. Speaking of a lot of the scholars and shill YouTubers and stuff, I've been watching a lot of their reviews on a lot of the episodes and you know, them, them kind of reviewing the show as a whole and saying like, yeah, you know, I, I didn't really, I, I don't mind the Harfoots. I think they're, you know, it's, it's, Okay, it's justified that this that the Harfoots would kill each other if they got behind in the pack. Or, you know, I, I can understand that these are kind of proto-hobbits or hobbit adjacent. And, and it gives a good backstory to Frodo and Sam. And it's, you know, maybe I'm not really feeling this part of it. And it's so disingenuous and inauthentic. Like, the, the shills that are doing this type of... Uh, re the review that it's it's very wishy-washy it's very well I mean I I guess like fuck off with that shit say what you mean and tell us how you actually feel judge the, so the show and criticize the show based off of what you have seen based off of your expertise which you should be bringing to this by the way Based off of your expertise, you should be bringing that to every one of your reviews. And instead of just like making up random theories and stuff, you should be actually criticizing the show and the showrunners and the writers and producers and directors on how they incorporated Tolkien's themes into this show. How, how they incorporated Tolkien's characters into this show. And if you were to do that, then you would obviously come to the objective realization that this is a failure that this is not what it was meant to be or maybe i'm wrong maybe this is exactly what it was meant to be maybe the showrunners intended for this to be just a complete and utter you know punch to the face of the fan base I don't know. What what do you guys think? Let me know in the in the comment section below if you guys think that this was actually purposefully meant to be bad or purposefully meant to be just a complete departure from what we know as Tolkien and the Lord of the Rings series. So with all that being said, this is a show that a dumb person might think is very smart. The show continues to be just and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens with no actual depth, meaning, or passion. I will end up watching the full entirety of the show at one point, maybe. It definitely won't be this year, I can tell you that. But uh, from the episodes that I've watched, from the uh, all the interviews and all the videos that I've seen on it, um, these are just kind of my takeaways from it. These are my reasons for why I ended up not watching the rest of the show. And there are going to be people on here who, who will probably judge me for not watching the entirety of the show. And that's fair. I understand. But when it comes to my enjoyment of the original trilogy, the, the, the Jackson trilogy, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, I'm not going to sacrifice that for this show. There's just no way that's going to happen. I'm not going to take the the risk or the chance of hindering my view of the best trilogy ever written, ever put onto film. I'm not going to risk that. I'm not going to sacrifice that for this piece of shit. 
it's not going to happen. So, like I said, you can criticize me and judge me for not watching the, the last four episodes, um, but I have seen plenty of videos from lots of my friends here on YouTube, such as Nerdrotic, Mauler, Shadowversity, all doing breakdowns of the show and uh, really giving an in-depth review of, of, of sometimes even objectively why it was why it failed and why it was not right to make this thing. So tell me in the comment section below what you guys think. Did you enjoy the show? Did you stop watching the show? Did you even think about watching the show? Um, I think there are a lot of different people and I would be really interested to see how people thought, you know, what, what people thought about this um, kind of phenomenon. So like I said, let me know in the comment section below what you guys thought about the show and also what do you guys think about some of my reasonings for me not watching the rest of this? Um, do you think that those are warranted? Do you think those are justified? Um, do you think that what I'm saying here, do you resonate with that? Um, I would love to hear your, your thoughts, um, your concerns, your comments, your questions, um, and maybe sometimes your arguments. If you disagree with me, I would love to hear that as well, because this is, uh, this is quite the phenomenon uh, of, of something this grand uh, with such a large fan base with this legendarium it's incredible to see what what has happened here so i think all of this stuff has just been kind of built up inside me that i've been trying to figure out a way of how to talk about it and i had to structure it within this kind of way of here are the main things that really just made me you know kind of lose interest um and also i kind of didn't really want to make this video i wanted to watch the entire series i wanted to review the entire series um, the, the videos were, were a lot of fun to make and I, and I really enjoyed interacting with other people who were watching the show. Um, but yeah, like I said, this was not something that I intended. I didn't want to make this video. I wanted to just put it behind me and forget about it and move on and go, all right, like rings of power happened. Let's move forward. <laughs> you know, let's just forget about that. Um, and let's remember the good things, the Lord of the Rings original trilogy. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.